Guys, welcome back to Just In Tech. Today we've got the brand new 12th gen Corsair Vengeance i7-300 pre-built gaming PC. We're gonna be unboxing, setting up, and taking a look at the internals, as well as giving you a sneak peek of some gameplay. It's got an i7-12 700K processor with an RTX 3080 GPU and 32 gigabytes of DDR5 4800 megahertz RAM. This is our second 12th gen pre-built, and I am super excited to see how this compares to that Alienware Aurora R13. All right, let's get in to it. Aw, oh, little thank you letter. Unpacking instructions. Remove first, remove the power cord and Wi-Fi antennas from the corner of the box. Loosen the two screws on the left side panel and remove the tempered glass. Ooh, tempered glass. Carefully remove the protective foam before turning on. Okay. Reinstall tempered glass side panel and secure with screws. Then connect your display and Wi-Fi and antennas to the highlighted ports and then connect the power cord to your system's power supply. By the way, Corsair did not sponsor this video. I just get really enthusiastic about unboxings. What else we got in here? All right, let's take out the foam. We've got a power cable, our two Wi-Fi antennas. There's something else underneath this bottom foam piece. Just a warranty guide. Let's get this nasty brown box out of here and get the main attraction all centered up. And now my favorite part, removing the plastic. Wow, that all black interior looks really slick. So here on our Z690 motherboard, we've got our i7-12 700K processor, liquid cooled with an all-in-one 240 millimeter CPU cooler. And then over here are 32 gigabytes of 4,800 megahertz DDR5 RAM. This is the Corsair Dominator Platinum RGB RAM. And beneath that are NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3080 GPU. Let's go ahead and take that out and take a closer look at it. Just need to remove two screws and flip this switch. It actually feels pretty heavy. I really like the design of the Founders Edition 3080. Only two fans, but overall it feels pretty solid. Behind that, you can see we've got our Pro Series 2.5 gigabit Wi-Fi 6 E card, and beneath that, our 850 watt gold power supply. On the top, we've got our power button, one USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type A port, one USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type C port, and a headphone and microphone jack. Then we've got this cool little magnetic mat right here. On the back, we've got your PS2 port, an HDMI and display port on your internal graphics card, four USB 2.0 ports, two USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports, one USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type A port, say that 10 times fast, and one USB 3.2 Gen 2 X2 Type C port, an Ethernet port, your attachments for your Wi-Fi antennas, your microphone, line out and line in, your subwoofer, center speaker, and rear speakers. And then beneath that on your graphics card, you've got your HDMI and three display ports. All right, let's go ahead and turn this on. Ooh, that looks pretty nice. It's not nearly as flashy and abstract as that Alienware Aurora R13, but it still looks pretty nice. All right, now let's go ahead and get everything all set up. We're gonna go ahead and speed through the startup process, choose our language, country, and Wi-Fi. Unlike Windows 10, with Windows 11, you have to be able to connect to the internet to get everything all set up. All right, let's go ahead and jump into the Corsair IQ software. Right now, I believe it's on Corsair 1 Blue. Cooling presets is gonna change the color based on what your CPU or GPU temperatures are. This is our Dominator RGB RAM, 3080. Let's see what the lighting effects we can add on here. Got watercolor. Oh, it actually affects this little V right here. That's pretty nice. All of these fans are individually controllable. Okay, let's see what static red looks like. Oh, that looks pretty cool. Corsair 1 blue. That looks pretty neat. Visor. Ooh. Okay, so it visors every fan individually. That's kind of cool. Let's check out rain. It's interesting. Looks like more of a pulsing rainbow, just regular rainbow, just a fading spectrum between the colors. <coughs> wow. So we got color wave. What does that look like? That looks pretty nice. CPU temperature. 
Right now it's green because it's not that hot. Custom, what does custom let us do? Looks like you can layer your different colors. Enough of that, let's check out some of the other software. We got Corsair Diagnostics, gathering information. I've already run a few tests on this. In your diagnostic section, you can choose between quick scan, full scan, and stress scan. I recommend stress scan just to see how good everything is under stress. It's kind of like choosing a wife. If you're gonna commit to buying this expensive machine, I recommend making it as angry as possible. But under my stress test, it did a pretty good job. And then under my device, it shows some of your current system stats, like your CPU usage, your storage. 72 app crashes? Not exactly sure what they're talking about there because I haven't seen one. All right, let's go ahead and pop over to the BIOS. Although there's no fancy overclocking settings within Windows on this machine, there's quite a few options as you can see right here in the BIOS. We've got a few advanced overclocking settings that I'm going to talk about a little bit more in my full review. In my full review, I'm going to be going a little bit more in depth with some of these settings and showing you exactly what they do and how they affect actual performance. The gaming previews that I'm going to show you near the end of this video, all of those are done with the stock settings. No overclocking. So keep that in mind. So my overall first impressions, the build quality looks pretty nice. And of course, being a core Corsair machine, they had to do a great job with RGB and giving you excellent customization controls within their IQ software. I'm about to give you a quick preview of some gameplay, but don't go off purchasing this just yet until you've watched my full review that I'll be releasing next week. So make sure to like, comment, and subscribe with notifications turned on to stay up to date with that. And remember, every week I do a giveaway that randomly selects someone who's interacted with this channel. Before I announce today's winner, if you're about to get this PC, please make sure to use my affiliate links in the description below as I get a small commission at no cost to you for every single purchase made. Or if you'd like to support this channel to help keep it going, feel free to become a channel member by clicking on the join button below. If you have any questions before the full review, please feel free to leave a comment below as I usually respond to all of them. And if you're publicly subscribed, not only will I respond to your question, but your comment gets replied to first. So we're going to start off our gaming sneak peek with Call of Duty Black Ops 4. These are all the settings that we used, pretty much maxed everything out. So this is a 4K resolution test. We're gonna show you about five to 10 seconds of this. This was after about a few minutes of gameplay. You can see right there in the middle, that is our average frames per second. Not too bad for 4K. Without doing any type of overclocking, that's pretty good. And then we're gonna switch our resolution over to 1440p right here. You can see our frames per second jumped up to 240 frames per second, pretty awesome. I usually don't suck this bad. I ran this through my computer, so there was a bit of a delay with my screen capturing software. So now this is at 1080p. Boom, boom. This is with Forza Horizon 4 at max settings at 4K. You can see we got about 150 frames per second, pretty awesome. And then this is with 1440p. Using 98% of the GPU right now. You can see the wattage is pretty low though. 206 frames per second at 1440p. And then at 1080p, this thing just blazed on through. 223 frames per second. Not too shabby. And the winner of the Amazon e-gift card giveaway is... Thanks for watching, guys. I love you guys. God bless.